Uh, hi, I hope you can uh, hear it in my voice. I can certainly heal, uh, feel it in my throat. How excited I am to be here today after two very long years, remote work, not seeing people in person. Um, what I'm about to talk to you in the next like 20-ish minutes apparently takes a lot of courage. I've been told so in, my, in, in the, the, the first LinkedIn post uh, I did about my, my speaking gig today. Uh, the tool that I'm about to talk about is like far from perfect, obviously, um, but um, it can have its uses. How can we make the most out of product page optimization? Or can you actually make riches out of these rags? Uh, like began. Sorry. My name is Marina. Um, and 2022 marks four years since I started working in ASO. When I don't, um, I actually watch a lot of Star Trek, but Twilight is like right here. Yeah, sorry. Um, and um, I like to play hidden objects games. That's, that's a thing about me. Um, okay, my clicker. Clicker. Do I click? Cool. That's my company. Uh, we're Popcore. We're uh, right here in Berlin. And we are dedicated to changing the game by being customer centric. We think about the audience first. Um, these are our top four titles, two of which, uh, Pull the Pin and Parking Jam, have been in the top 100 free games for most of this, their existence in the past two years. Now, once again, bear with me, my voice is breaking. Um, as I tell you how Christmas came twice last year, did you know that? <laughs> Christmas came on December 25th. I think I'm orthodox, don't, don't get me wrong here. Christmas came on 20, December 21st, but it also came on December 7th when Apple's native store experiment test went live. Wow. Did it though? Like, I was super excited when I read about it in the, in the so Stack Slack, like it immediately I ran to my, to my then company Slack and I told them, people, this is happening, we don't have to pay. Boy, were we fooled. So, um, you probably know there are five stages of grief, right? <laughs> the first stage is denial. They'll fix this soon, come on. After that, you, you get hit with anger, like, this is not being fixed. Then you, you try to bargain. Are there people from Apple here? Don't raise your hand if you're here. Let's write to Apple and submit a plea, right? Come on, fix this. And then you get sad. I'm never going to test iOS assets again. And afterwards, you just accept it. And we try to work around it. So... What, about, what I'm about to share here are personal experiences, so bear with me. If you don't agree with what I'm about to say, or you have different experiences, by all means, after my speech, we have a coffee break. Come on, attack me, tell me like I'm, if I'm doing something wrong, because that's actually how we learn. We embrace our failures. Here are five of PPO setbacks in the more or less order that I realized them and how I figured out how to work with them, if not around them. Releasing a new version automatically stops a running test. I should have put uh, Jean-Luc Picard here face palming himself. Um, when you think about it, at the current state of App Store Connect, this actually makes sense. Uh, production and marketing are together on one page and your tests rely heavily on uh, what your current store page looks like. So if you change your assets on your current store page and release a new version, your running test is automatically void. But it doesn't make it hurt any less though, does it? Um, so this is an illness without a cure. If it's a hurt horse, if it's down, just shoot it, forget about it. However, if you really want to work around this, um, there is something that you can do, and it's pretty obvious. Okay. Make product team your best work buddies. Aw. So, um, 
We know that um, App Store Analytics takes uh, seven days of running plus about two days for analytics to catch up in order to give you the statistical confidence for your tests as much as it can give you. So get super up close and personal with the release roadmap. Um, if production doesn't feel comfortable with stretching their iterations, uh, just sell the business case. It's native, it's here, it's cheap-ish. And eventually when you do get uh, a winner, it's just a click away. And remember, screenshots, videos, video posters, tests, are, don't need like, uh, a, new, a new version page. It's live in a in matter of hours. Um, I propose the first note, make sure you're included on communication with, with production. No matter what they use, Slack, Skype, um, email, uh, messenger doves, whatever it is, make sure you get the no when something is getting hot under their feet, so then you know if uh, something will be interrupted so you can expect it. And in the end, super important. You get a win, brag about it. Tell them, people, we did this, we changed that, this is happening. Uh, usually UA will also wanna know if something is changed on the store, so obviously this goes hand in hand. Um, this also applies if you don't have a tight schedule, just know when they're releasing stuff. If they're releasing like once or twice a month on iOS, it's still good to know um, when they have uh, stuff going on. It will save you time and nerves, and they might actually give you some ideas, I propose what uh, Stuart said earlier. They might give you ideas for, ne for like, uh, the next uh, the next iterations. Um, here is something I did quite recently. Uh, I screenshotted this before it actually got some super fiery emojis and people like woo yay fun. Uh, but we did actually get 99% confidence for this one, and I'm going to show you uh, the the numbers for this one in a couple of slides after this. Just, you know, include people in your victories. They will love it, they get more lenient in the future, and eventually they will start telling you, like, be proactive. Look, something is happening. If you have something running, no, it's dead. Fine, thank you. New asset tests must pass review. Now this actually, again, does make sense, and it goes hand in hand with the previous one. Um, get familiar with the roadmap, understand what releases are being planned, and it should give you plenty of time to plan for any delays on start. It would have been nice if we could release PPO treatments with the binaries, but damn, that's not happening. Remember, stage two of grief. Um, something I've tried in the past to do, uh, like set up uh, an experiment, keep it in draft, and once the version is being released, I would uh, release the test. I get the message that the version uh, I was trying to test is expired, so like that's not happening, but learn from my failures. Why not? Um, yeah, like tests that don't need uh, to go through review, screenshots, videos, videos, uh, tests without or vi with videos, and icon tests, because the, the icons already passed review with the binary. But tests that do need to pass review are everything else. So, yeah. Has anyone watched any of the new Spider-Man? Yeah? Remember MJ Jones? Like, she can't get disappointed because she's already expecting you to disappoint her. Learn from MJ Jones. She's a, she's a smart little girl. A little. So, if, uh, usually, uh, there are some practitioners who have reported that they've been waiting for more than two days for their test to pass review. So if you're not one of those people, yay for you, super happy. Um, but uh, if you do notice that your, your tests are getting stuck in review, waiting for review or in review, you can just cancel the submission, resubmit, and it should pass within like a couple of hours. Um, something I've noticed, again, personal experience, uh, avoid submitting uh, experiments on Fridays. They can get stuck over the weekend. You've been, you've been robbed of precious runtime. It doesn't always happen, so like measure it out for yourself. Um, 
Another thing I've noticed that um, uh, like when you upload new assets, they can get stuck in processing. This is, the this is a hardcore fix. Delete it, turn it off again, on again, try again. Um, so um, it, can, it goes the same for videos and for screenshots. And another thing, the poster frame seems not to be um, setting the right timestamp. This is not happening on the, on the main store page. This is only happening in product page optimization. Um, you can never really set it at the right timestamp. Something that has helped me is putting the video poster within the video at the 29th second. Nine out of 10 times, it doesn't need a fix. Sometimes it does need a little bit of TLC. You can't run more than one test at a time, plus international metrics are aggregated. Again, we can't fix this one. Uh, we were super stoked to see that um, uh, you can run more than one localization at a time. However, uh, in analytics, you can granulate the metrics. Plus, remember, we're testing localizations, but analytics shows data for countries. So um, what I'm about to show you next, please don't kill me. I know it's a big no-no, but we take our learnings from Android. Um, not completely, like we don't base our strategy for iOS from Android. We take some learnings in order to give us a head start, and after that, when things start moving, we switch to iOS. So what we do, run the first experiment, sorry, in the default language. For us, it's English US. I think most of us are English US. Um, once we get a win on that, we run a second experiment in one or two of our top locales, so like the whales. Um, and after that, we apply the same creative on the lesser locales, no testing, and then monitor KPIs. I see what it does. Most of the time, we get, we get success from this one. Um, like so far, this is working for us. If, it's not, if you tried it, has not been working for you, let's, let's talk about it. I, I really want to learn about it. The sample size. Okay, so in, again, in an attempt to find a solution for this, I've tried looking through uh, sample size calculator, calculators online. Um, if I can speculate the sample size that I would need to get a successful test in 10 days, so like seven plus however much time it needs for analytics to catch up. Um, I recently learned about Evan Miller's calculator um, unfortunately, that one is frequentist. Um, PPO is Bayesian. So. Okay, um, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry. So I tried uh, some calculators based on the Bayesian model, and I failed on that one, so that's dead. Um, something else I've tried, uh, just give me like a, an idea of how much of a sample I would need the average of the last 30 days for impressions, because we need impressions. These two experiments, although they're at different times, are for the same app. The top one, 99% confidence, is the screenshot I showed you earlier, where I bragged about it. It's, um, it shows running, but that was actually closed, so it's two days back, remember. Um, for that one, I calculated over 300,000 impressions, and we got confidence over 170. Confusion. And then for the German test, I needed about 20,000. I have over 30 with 20% confidence. And this was a significant change in both. So uh, it's not like a minor change that's indistinguishable. Um, however, Germans don't like us. Why? <laughs> So, um, one more thing, like I went through five, but this one, testing icons on PPOs. So, like when Apple announced that um, uh, you'll be able to test icons, they spoke about a holistic experience to users, meaning when they see your app on the App Store they, and, and they decide to click and download your app from that icon, they would want to see your icon on their device as well. Makes sense, right? It's fair enough. 
But this means also technical capabilities that you would need Xcode 13 or later. Um, Xcode 13 has the asset catalog where you put your treatments. Um, I've learned that the asset catalog is uh, uh, unlimited, I think, or like quite big, so you can add like multiple icons, but for the test you need obviously uh, three treatments along with your default. Then you submit the binary, you wait for it to pass the review, hopefully, no bugs, no rejections. Then you release it to production and you start your test. No waiting for a review uh, for the test, the icons have already passed. Simple enough? Not quite. When you have a winner, you need to stop your experiment because you can't reply the winner remotely. Then upload a new binary with the winner as default, then wait for it to pass review, hope no rejections, and so on and so forth. Um, this is a very lengthy process, and unfortunately, my current company, we don't have the technical capabilities for this. Um, so we're using an external tool that I'm not uh, at liberty to talk about here, but afterwards we can, of course, chat about it. What about custom product pages? Now, when I wrote my, my description for the speech today, I was hoping I would have something more to say. Unfortunately, no. Like, I can't pull my pockets out like this. So, uh, we've learned that some developers have had success replacing PPOs with CPPs. Unfortunately, in our case, uh, that wasn't the case. So, I'm very sorry to affront on delivering this. Like, it's completely my fault. Um, however, like, we, like uh, Peggy Ann said, there's um, a workshop running uh, parallel to this one that I'm hoping actually to catch after my speech. Uh, where hopefully some more light will be shed on this. Um, that will be actually it for me today. And I thank you, first of all, for listening to me. But remember, my company is not your company. My experience is not your experiments. Of course, there's only one me up on this stage. If there's someone else, please, please stand up. So take my learning to the grain of salt, right? Um, but experimenting loves experimenting, so like calls to like, it takes also some bold moves. So own it, experiment the crap out of yourself, and eventually you will find what works best for your company. Thank you, Feature, for having me up here today. I feel like such a noob. And um, yeah, it's been lovely seeing you all, so yeah, let's chat about it later. Thank you.